everyone, it's Judy. Welcome back to this week's Ecosystem Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Stephen Chavez of Siemens EDA. Steph is a subject matter expert in PCB design and layout and also has a deep understanding of manufacturing and assembly. He's going to talk about things he's learned over the last 20 plus years um, in the mill aero and avionics industry of layout and hardware development. He's also going to talk about his recent transitions to Siemens EDA and educational content that he's going to be bringing on a regular basis uh, from that platform. So I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Make sure you like and subscribe before I let you go. I will be bringing you lots of good content coming up as we look toward DesignCon at the end of January. Now let's jump into this conversation with Stephen Chavez of Siemens EDA. Hi, Steph. Thanks so much for joining us today. It's so good to see you, my friend. Hey, Judy. It's great to be here. So you made a job change recently that I thought would be of interest to discuss here on the podcast. So I know you have a long tenure in the industry and also as a subject matter expert of PCB design. And so can you give our audience a, just an overview of your background, tenure in the industry, and then tell us what your new title is at Siemens EDA, and then we'll unpack that and then share some exciting news. Sure, I'd be happy to. So first, let me say uh, thanks again for having me on the podcast. So uh, my background uh, within the industry is, uh, like I said, it spans uh, quite a long time. i I'm an industry knowledge subject matter expert in printed circuit design. I have over 30 years experience that covers the full spectrum of PCB design. I'm a co-author of the new industry printed circuit uh, engineering professional curriculum and certification program, which is the CPCD course. Uh, I'm an IPC master instructor for the CID and CAA plus education and certification as well. Uh, I've published many articles and columns in the leading in several leading industry magazines, as well as uh, one of my highlights is that I'm the chairman of the printed circuit engineering association as well as the thing that I really I always like to comment or, or make make a known is that uh, I'm a veteran of the United States Marine Corps where I started. That's the foundation of my education and evolution of leadership where I served five years as an avionic technician. So that's, that's me in a nutshell. Well, I have known you for a while, Steph. In fact, um, just as way of background mm-hmm. for audience, when I used to sell boards and EMS services, I used to call on Steph (laughs) at at, uh, one of his professional jobs. And that's how we got to know each other. But that, that Marine spirit, that tenacity, that leadership is in everything you do. So I really appreciate that background and, um, and you really do bring all that passion and can do Mm -hmm. spirit to everything you do. So, Mm -hmm. um, Tell, remind me again, Steph, what is your new title at Siemens EDA? So uh, my uh, new title here at Siemens is Senior Product Marketing Manager. And it's, you know, when I, when I say that, Senior Product Marketing Manager, uh, I really stop and think, wow, I really evolved from, uh, it, how did I go <laughs> from PCB design to now Senior Product Marketing Manager and Marketing? But, uh, you know, as we as we talk today, w- w- you'll understand, and it, it makes total sense of my evolution in, in uh you know, I'm very grateful for the opportunity uh, that Siemens has given me. So it, it, it's a win-win for everyone. How did I go from a technical salesperson and board <laughs> fab and EMS to marketer and podcaster? So you and I are exactly. in a similar path, my friend. So um, anyways, I'm excited to dig into it. And and your passion for advocacy and teaching is not lost on me. And it's why I wanted to have you on the podcast today. So we all have our stories. What made you want to jump? I know for many years you were a mentor, um, kind of superhero. That was your tool. <laughs> and, uh, and you had a lot of strong relationships. And then of course, Siemens bought mentor. And I imagine there's a story there, but what made you want to do that jump? So first, you know, you know that, that's a great question. And let me start by saying that, uh, you know, I've had a very successful career uh, up to date, and, and I'm very thankful, and, and I'm very—I feel very blessed that, that I've had this opportunity. Uh, the opportunity uh, came with the uh, initially came with, uh, you know, when I first was introduced to the Siemens tools, and and uh, or at that time it was Mentor. Um, 
Uh, and they provided me the tools and, and support that allowed me to be successful um, throughout the years. And it's not just one or two years. It's been several decades uh, that I've been successful wielding that tool. And uh, But the support is, is just unbelievably awesome that I received from uh, now, from Mentor, which is now Siemens. But at the foundation of my support and what has allowed me to get where I'm at, and I'll be very honest and upfront that my wife, Robin, has been instrumental and has been the backbone to my success. I mean, without her, uh, Steph doesn't sit here today and deliver what he can. Um, I'm at a point in my career where I want to pay it forward and give back to the industry because as we see how the industry has evolved, um, there are several gaps in our industry for skill sets and expertise. And the biggest that I can see is the PCB designer. And um, uh, sadly, you know, the designers today, I think the the, the average age of a, a designer is maybe uh, mid to late fifties. And, um, you know, they're either retiring or, you know, sadly they're, they're dying. And so that, that gap isn't being filled because the skill set of a PCB designer isn't being fulfilled at the university level. Most major universities don't teach this. No, so they sure young don't. engineers have to learn on the fly and have to learn the hard way. And so, as I said, you know, for all the mentorship and, and, and um, people who helped me get to where I'm at, including my wife, you know, I owe it to them to pay it back and, and, and to pay it forward to the, to help influence the new generation. So they, they can uh, skip those school of hard knocks, you know, if they're willing <laughs> to drink the Kool-Aid that, you know, people like uh, Rick Hartley, Susie Webb, um, Mike Creedon, you know, that, that, that we are spewing uh, and trying to give back to the industry and, and, and make a positive difference uh, in the industry. So, it's fitting that uh, my evolution uh, is to evolve to Siemens because the platform that they provide or they uh, um, uh, have given me now with this opportunity is, is unbelievable. And, and I, it's fitting. And when you think about, really think about my evolution and, and how long I've wielded that tool and, and been very successful with it. Um, but the success isn't just me alone. It's a collaboration of, with the, the support from Siemens. And, and so it's fitting that, that I, I joined Siemens into the, in the team, even though I've been accused many years uh, leading up to this that I've been a Siemens employee because uh, I was very uh, vocal <laughs> on it. Honorary. <laughs> you know, the thing is, is that it's not that I, I'm, it's just that I'm very passionate with PCB design. I, I just, I don't just like it. I love it. And I, I'm excited how to show somebody how you can be better and faster. And it just happens to be, that's the tool I'm using. And that's the tool that allows me to do that. And I just get excited and I want to share it. I want other people to have the same success. I don't want people to struggle if they don't have to. And, um, uh, but I'll be the first to tell you that, you know, you do what you feel is best for you. And I just know that, um, I've had the opportunity to use several EDA, uh, software. And, um, for me, uh, you know, this is the one I willed. And I, I, if I'm going into battle, this is the Excalibur that I'm using. Well, and, I think that it's no surprise that the tool set that Siemens offers, you were doing really complex electronics and Mm -hmm. not every tool can handle, you know, that kind of firepower, right? And ability. Yeah, that's right. Especially when you talk about multi-domain integration, uh, uh, multi-discipline integration in your full PLM system and yeah. yeah, it's a uh, it, it's very complicated, especially in the mill arrow and and uh, yeah. When you talk about the uh, the lengthy processes and, and uh, yeah. the thoroughness that you have to be done, yeah, it's um it's a great platform, and uh, if you have the opportunity to use it and and, and master it, uh, you know, it's amazing what you can accomplish. Well, of course, you and I share that passion, right? That <laughs> most I definitely mean, um, that we want to help fill those gaps, and because we are part of the older generation, we want to mm-hmm. pay back, right? We want to pass that baton back. And um, that's a very gratifying thing to do is give away your knowledge. And so it's perfect that you're here, Steph, because you're on the right, you're among the right company here with our listeners and our mm-hmm. audience. Um, and also, I know there's so much people can benefit from what you want to share. So, um, and I don't think I've shared with you, Steph, but the sort of the tagline to the ecosystem podcast is educate, connect, equip, right? And again, I love it. Right. And so you and I, right. And so why I 
picked that is because I called on people like you for decades. And I mm-hmm. thought those are the three most pressing needs of design engineers. They need constant education. They need to connect with each other in the industry, in a community, and they need mm-hmm. tools and knowledge, you know, as fast as mm-hmm. possible. And I, I'm just excited to dig into this because I know that you're getting ready with Siemens to serve up that same kind of recipe um, on their platform. Mm-hmm. Yes. So um, just give us a kind of broad brush strokes as senior product marketing manager. Like what does your day job look like? What are the type of things you're involved in? And then I want to talk about things you're going to be serving up from an education standpoint. Sure, sure. So, you know, my role here at Siemens is, is in thought leadership, you know, uh, on this particular marketing team, you know, where I can share my industry experiences as a subject matter expert of design um, and uh, my experiences uh, of successful use within the, you know, the Siemens or Expedition Enterprise Suite uh, by having the success I've had, not just in one design, but over, you know, two decades uh, of utilizing that tool. So that that's mm-hmm. that's the first thing right there is, is is that and that's in a nutshell that's my role here at Siemens and you know now with the platform with the podcast and, and um, the video series that are coming out on YouTube and and what we're doing and that's uh, uh, and, and and even more of uh, uh, writing articles and, and and content and white papers that's it's it's like I said it's an amazing opportunity and it allows me uh, to share what I've learned and and. Um, both good and bad and, and, and take that experiences and, and serve it up. And it's up to each individual to, um, you know, take it and run with it. Right. Exactly. And so my job is to advocate to make sure they know where to go look for it and where the good sources of accurate, good, solid. And so of course I'm thrilled personally to see you have that platform, that large platform on Siemens. And so congratulations, my friend. So you just let the cat out Thanks. of the bag. You're be you're <laughs> gonna, you're going to join me, and you're going to become a podcast host, which is mm-hmm. again, you know, fun for me, Steph, because you and I have done some podcasts together in the past where I was host, right? And so now mm-hmm. you now you know to see you joining the podcast uh, group is really fun. So let's talk about that. I know you launched a podcast recently uh, that's kind of just sort of the end, like the uh, fourth quarter this year. So can you tell us about what you've done so far? And then let's talk about what you're planning to do in 2023 and get our audience plugged mm-hmm. into that great resource. Sure, sure. So, you know, the new podcast is called the, the Printed Circuit Podcast, you know, where I'm I'm the host and uh, we'll welcome different guests each week and where we'll discuss thoughts and insights, uh, experience and uh, and exchanging dialogue for the printed circuit engineering, uh, you know, uh, evolution or the career. And when you think about that, it's a broad uh, uh, concept or it's a broad spectrum because you got design, fabrication, assembly, so many details. And there's so many things and so many expertise that, that have to uh, be consumed within that. You know, uh, it's it just it's a great fitting, especially for the. Like, uh, as I mentioned, the gap that that keeps growing and um, Siemens will do our part and, and uh, me representing Siemens will do our part to to try to fill those gaps and and, and uh, help um, the newer generation be successful. You know, the podcast was kicked off a few weeks ago um, where we have the first uh, five episodes uh, about supply chain resilience. And, and when we think about that, we think about the evolution had that came about because of COVID and the COVID opened yeah. the door or opened our eyes to everything regarding, you know, the old legacy way of doing things, uh, you know, uh, where it was a just in time approach where now you have to have that intelligence at the point of design and, and Siemens gets it. And, and um, this is uh, our evolution, you know, it's such a relevant topic, a relevant topic of what's happening in the industry today. You know, Siemens has the vision of how to create the supply chain resilience at the point of design and, um, and they have solutions for it. And so it, it's a great opportunity and it's a, it's a great evolution for Siemens as well. And for me, you know, and after these five episodes that we'll launch, you know, we'll switch gears and premiere new topics uh, around PCB to design best practices as we uh, evolve and continue to go forward. So I hope, you know, people join in and then follow along. It's, it's, it, it'd be a great, uh, a great, uh, 
source our well well of knowledge to tap into. For our audience, I just want to let you know, Steph already sent that link over to me where you can find that. So you can find those in the show notes. Um, Siemens also has a uh, LinkedIn showcase page and we're always on, you know, most of us are on LinkedIn regularly. So um, that, that link is also below. So make sure you check that out. Um, all right. You mentioned, I mean, that seems like a really broad topic, but what do you mean when you say, you know, over the next year, you're going to talk about best practices that what's so, rolled up under that? Like, give us some sure. so, examples. Yeah, so, you know, so when we think about best practices, you know, uh, they're really the insights and tips of, uh, how to, uh, um, to be successful in the approach of PCB design that maximizes the value of the tool sets like Expedition or whatever PCB tool you're using, you know, there will be five chapters uh, in the series of each chapter of how we'll unfold and how we'll share uh, and how it falls under what, what I would say each pillar uh, of best practices that will cover everything from design simulation to basically anything related to full PCB flow when you talk about the mm. whole um, concept of, or the, the process of PCB design. Because when you think about PCB design in a nutshell or, or as, as a whole, the process is the same. I don't care what company or which tool set you use. It's pretty much the same. The question is, is in your ecosystem, are you most efficient and are you continuously evolving to be better and faster? Because that's the challenge is to be, you know, uh, on time and under budget. And, and you know, mm -hmm. nowadays with the you know constraints of, you know, the budget, uh, the the schedule, the limited resources, it, it's, it's, it's a challenge. And so, how do you master, you know, the evolution or the, the, the three suspects when you talk about uh, like PCB design, which I refer to as the designer's triangle, uh, which, you know, I use when I'm teaching uh, the, the courses, uh, the three perspectives of solvability for performance, uh, um, so layout solvability, performance and manufacturability. Uh, you have to understand that first before, you know, uh, you can go on to very complex and very, uh, you know, system level designs when you talk about designing in a, in a large box. You know, for example, you know, in our first chapter, we'll, which will unfold is where we're creating a digitally integrated and optimized multi-domain environment. You know, to do that, you know, you have MCAD, ECAD collaboration that, that starts off, that handoff and that, that integration and collaboration between uh, design and then you go into manufacturing it also standardizes what we talk about uh, um, standardizing the library and your data management because manage your data is key. And if you don't do oh, that yeah. successfully, bad things can happen very quickly. And, <laughs> and, and, and a quick example is, you know, I've seen in industries where, where people design or fabricate the wrong version of board yeah. uh, because they didn't control their data and, yeah. you know, uh, uh, circuitry is left out and, Somebody changed something and the, the Gerbers that went out weren't the latest Gerbers. And yeah, it's or, or ODE++ or 2581 data that went out. It's just, yeah. So uh, stuff like that uh, is what we'll share and what I'll talk about. I'll give you my own experiences, uh, you, you know, as I unfold this, uh, um, you know, on these It topics. sounds so, so really good. A lot of stories. <laughs> I am so excited. I, I can't wait to listen, honestly, because not being a layout person, but having worked out, uh, worked with EEs and design engineers mm -hmm. and students and the whole bit, I see it. I don't deeply understand it like you do. <laughs> and so I'm so excited um, to, to have that available. It doesn't seem like it's available in like one spot. And, you know, podcasting has become, mm -hmm. you know, there, it's easily digestible you can do it while you're working out or driving your car stuff. So I'm so excited to see you step into this media and be able to teach sort of in scale. Mm -hmm. And I know that you will have access to thought leader, say in MCAT or whatever. So I'm so excited that you're going to yeah, do this. Know, I, I, I'm extremely excited, especially when you think about, you know, as chairman of PCA where, where there, that association is, collaborate, educate, and inspire. I mean, that, you know, that, that's the industry uh, and, and to be successful at it, then you you should be applying all that uh, in your career as you evolve. And uh, it's, it's a lot so of great hard. opportunity out there. Mm -hmm. It's so hard because we've got supply chain issues. I mean, yeah. there's no easy way to do this. If it was, 
we'd all be doing it, right? But it's exactly. no easy way to do it. But if we can get it in sort of digestible chunks and, mm-hmm. um, you know what? I think I'll share in the show notes too. Or no, I'm not going to do that. You and Jerry Partita from Summit did something mm-hmm. along those lines recently at um, a PCA meeting. For our audience, if you're not familiar with PCEA, it's Printed Circuit Engineering Association. I've talked about it before, but you may have missed it. And it's for um, um, Steph is chair, Rick Hartley's part of it, Susie Webb, Mike Creedon, Gary Farrar. I, there's a whole group and there's chapters all around the country. So I'll put a link to their yeah. website below. Um, and anyways, you guys did a presentation at a PCA meeting, mm-hmm. a part yeah, that- technical <laughs> presentation and part skit of real world yeah. Real we, uh, world scenario is easy for me to say. Um, no, that was our tr- yeah, that was our attempt at, at trying to be comical or try to do a comedy routine, uh, basically an Abbott and Costello routine. Because in reality, you know, the integration between uh, design and manufacturing, one of the core steps that happens in the beginning is the designer talking to his fabricator regarding his stack up and the build of his board. And uh, Jerry Partita, who is a very near and dear friend of mine. I believe I think his title or his role is like vice president uh, of uh, uh, technology or something like that there Mm -hmm. uh, with Summit. And um, so he and I thought it would be a great opportunity to talk about like 20 real world problems that happen day in and day out and and make it funny. Because when you think about, you know, uh, one of the things you mentioned is about all the podcasts that are out there today and and where to get a certain education. there's so much out there in the industry. It's hard to digest what is good content and what I consider noise. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, and there's you know, mm-hmm. and there's way and, more and so, noise yeah. than there is good stuff. <laughs> yes, and and, and and you know, so uh, I will speak as chairman of PCA. Um, that the, that's a great source to tap into because I know the individuals involved, um, and uh, so. Uh, Jerry and I thought it would be great to do a comedy routine in, in, in that. And it turned out to be a huge success. It was at the Orange County chapter where there were like 45 to 50 individuals. And everyone was shocked of that each one of those issues that we joked about was real and was a real customer dialogue. And um, But uh, where I played the, uh, you know, uh, the Costello part of the, of the comedy routine. And, and, yeah, it was hilarious, and uh, yeah, so we decided, you know, hey, we're, well, let's let's take this on the road and let's see what we could do with it and have some fun with it. So, you know, I have well, no doubt. Sorry for it, for for yeah. taking a side trip, but <laughs> no, no, um, it relates. It relates to what we're talking about, and extremely relatable. And and w- why I like that so much is I think part of the laughter, at least for me, but I think the designers and manufacturers in the room is we are laughing out of familiarity because we've all Mm -hmm. been in there and you know what result is no joke it's hard and and it hurts but it's funny that we could just sort of laugh at ourselves for a moment and i think your podcast at siemens is going to go a long way to help fill those gaps so again so excited for you thank you um by the way i've been talking to summit and jerry in the background because i want to redo the skit on this podcast so i'm working on that buddy let's do it yeah i'm gonna be calling you back so that was your practice session you guys can come back and do it now Because I most think definitely, it's real- yeah, we're excited to. Okay, yeah, good. Jerry, Jerry and I uh, talked. We, we're very excited to do it. So, well, you know, you both are my brothers, so it was extra, <laughs> extra fun to see you two do it because of your depth of expertise from both sides. And you know, I always tell people I got the scars to prove it. Right, you guys have the battle exactly. wounds, right? Um, yeah. So it, it's perfect. Yeah, Anyways, you know, yeah, and you 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 need you need those learning experiences, unfortunately, uh, yeah. uh, you know, and, and don't shy away from them. And to me, there's no real failure. The failure happens is if, if something fails and you don't learn from it and don't apply what you learn and move on, then that, then that's truly a failure. Fail fast, right? Yeah. Fail fast but learn and from through it. it. Yep. Cause there's sometimes there's no other way, like you said. Um, mm-hmm. so besides board designers, um, which is an obvious audience. I mean, Siemens, you know, kind of covers end to end now 
Um, oh, they, the full spectrum of tool mm-hmm. set, right? They're they're building this. They have a fully integrated tool set now with Siemens mm-hmm. on board. So who else should listen to your podcast, Steph? So you know that, that's a that, that's a great question. I would say any individual from beginner who wants to get involved with printed circuit engineering to the senior um, industry veteran that's out there who's already involved and hopefully you're mentoring some uh, younger individual. You know, they, they, those are the individuals that should listen listen in and that will benefit from this podcast uh, that, that I'll be sharing. So yeah, it, I would say anybody and everybody. Do you think there'll be benefits to say EMS companies and fabricators and things like that too? Oh, most definitely. The reason why okay. I say that is because that they, they will, they will, as we talked about, as we evolve the podcast, um, I will speak to those particular individuals. I will bring those expertise um, I see. Uh, on and, and, and engage with them and get their insights. Because when you think about printed circuit engineering, it's the full spectrum. It's not just board design anymore. Yeah, A board designer needs to understand you know, downstream, what is going on downstream. Because the decisions you make today are in, at, the, at that moment, a good designer will understand the impact, whether it's positive or negative, what's going to happen downstream. And you've got to understand that. And in my evolution, I get it. And, and many senior guys at, at my level, the ones that are really good, they know this and they know how to mitigate to be successful. And um, that, that's the key. I have an expert in the field named Eli Hughes. Uh, he mm-hmm. does some stuff for um, NXP, but he's an, an amazing engineer. And he was also an instructor uh, at... Um, Penn State, brilliant guy. And he came up with this term that I'm going to steal since he's had experience in both software development and hardware development and, you know, embedded and how all that works together. He came Mm -hmm. up with the term, um, a full stack hardware engineer. Uh. And I love that because we usually talk about a full stack software engineer, right? And so Mm -hmm. he's saying, to your point, is not only upstream, we also have to realize downstream Mm -hmm. like you have to have like this complete kind of panoramic of hardware development not that you have to be an expert at every piece but you have to sort of have situational awareness and of course at the speed that technology changes you can't ever stop learning because you blink and something changed or something got smaller a new technology came out so again another reason why i think uh, yeah, and sure. I know and that'll the, be happening in real time on your podcast because you'll be bringing yeah. the latest and the greatest. And and it's yeah, it, that's why I, I that's why I love PCB design, and I, I think we have the best career uh, uh, because you do you have to be cognizant and and understand not just you know um, the electronics but the the mechanical aspects. You've got to under, understand how the software is going to interact with it. You've got to understand. You, you know, your simulation, your, your design for manufacturability, your supply chain now more than ever supply chain resilience. You have to understand all aspects of design in, uh, or all aspects of printed circuit engineering. And uh, today's designers are not like yesterday years designers. When I talk mm-hmm. about designers in the past being like in a silo under a rock, or they were yeah. just an afterthought. And it was John who did everything, but John's education was just, 40 years of everyone just left him alone and he never, you know, he just evolved however he, he evolved and there's no formal education or anything. Whereas today the young designer is typically a double E coming out of college yeah. who has the electronic background, but doesn't have, he has no clue as to how to properly and successfully design a printed circuit board. By the way, I don't think we've discussed that, but um, <clears throat> when I was with Altium for a while, I was covering mm-hmm. the academic, and it allowed me to have deep conversations, particularly with UCSD and San mm-hmm. Diego, about why aren't you guys teaching board design? And he explained it <laughs> to me why, and now I understand why. And luckily, there's people like Eric Bogatin that have integrated it, but it's yeah. it's about how the research He's dollars amazing. flow. But what Eric yep. said is on, he, and I explained this to Eric, and Eric said, well, you're right, except in our, at um, at Colorado where he teaches, mm-hmm. he said the 10 people that are in staff in our department, they're all from industry. 
And that's what made yeah. it different. So it's it's a, it's a tricky dynamic. It's not like we could just go tell the universities, hey, EEs are going to lay out the boards at it. It's not that easy because it's not how the research dollar flows and the funding. And mm-hmm. hopefully this will get patched at some point, but I don't think it's going to be any time in the future. All right. Um, moving along. Um, I know we're running out of time stuff, but are you going to be at... Um, at Design Con, is Siemens going to have a, a, a booth there? You know, or? I, I definitely know Siemens will have a booth there. We'll, we'll see how the year unfolds in 2023. I know it's exciting and it's going to be dynamic. And uh, so we'll see. Uh, you know, I could be there. It just depends on, on what else is happening or what, what the evolution is of uh, of my role in, in, in how the year unfolds. Because there's so many activities, there's so many things. And so we need to pick and choose where right. our return on investment is the highest. I mean, you know all about that yeah. uh, more so than I do. So yeah, I mean, in, in our team, in, one thing I love about Siemens is they're all about strength and numbers. And, and that's what is, you know, over the years has allowed me to be truly successful in wielding that tool. And uh, so we definitely have what, we, you know, as I, we used to say in the Marine Corps, boots on the ground. And yeah. Siemens, it, it, they get that and, and, and they kill it, in my opinion. Uh, they're the best at it with, with flooding you with, with support and uh, to be successful. So. Okay. Well, I will um, be watching for that. Um, mm-hmm. And I will, Steph, if you do go, please look me up because. I would definitely keep you posted. Okay. Um, and I can always add that in the show notes after the fact, but the reason I wanted to ask is because um, I'm, I'm in final negotiations with the form Informa who puts on design mm-hmm. con and I will be podcasting from the show floor. And so if you're there or your colleagues are there, please let me know and we'll make sure and we'll get you on the design con podcast. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Believe me. Yeah. Most definitely we will. Okay. Well, um, for our audience, I've left everything Steph talked about in the show notes, as I mentioned, we'll add more goodies as they become available. Steph, any last thoughts before we wrap up? You know what? I just, again, uh, I want to thank you for allowing me the opportunity to be on the podcast and share the exciting a news how you know our new podcast series will unfold and in my new role within Siemens uh, uh, in thought leadership and, and, and how my career has evolved and will continue to evolve in this amazing platform that Siemens has provided to me. So it's like I said, it's a win-win for everyone. Um, Indeed. And uh, definitely I'm at a point in my career of giving back. So again, thank you for having me, Judy. And I, you're amazing. Keep this up because we need this. The, we need you in the industry and we need what you're Thank doing. You. So well, please, I, I'm not yeah. just saying that as your, as your dear friend, I'm saying you from one professional colleague to another, you know, keep it up. Thank you. And you too. And I'm so excited <clears throat> for you. Congratulations again. And thanks so much for coming on um, to our audience. Thanks so much for joining us today. I hope you will go tap into the resources and, and check out Steph's um, podcast that's already been kicked off, but there's going to be lots more coming in 2023. And if you are at Design Con, please stop by and see the Siemens booth if they're there. And make sure you stop by my booth too, because I'll be podcasting live from the show floor. Thanks so much for joining us today. We will see you next week. Until then, remember to always stay connected to the ecosystem. Mm-hmm.